Hello, everybody. Welcome to Maker Monday with the Great Lakes Science Center and Cleveland Public Library. And today, we're going to be answering the question, what if I could time travel? So my name is Joy, and we are going to see how humans have interacted with their environment over the years and how we could maybe help restore it and make it a little bit better in the future. So what is your environment? Does anyone know? So an environment is how different things like the living things that live in an area interact with climate and soil and other different types of factors that impact how we survive as people or as animals or as plants or as any living thing really. So an ecosystem is the combination of all of these organisms, whether it's plants, animals, people, and all those factors all living together. And the environment is sort of how everything interacts. So do you think that humans have harmed our environment at all over the years? Probably a little bit. There's people who litter sometimes. So throwing trash out away outside instead of in a trash can can hurt the environment. Cutting trees down isn't good. There's things like pollution, whether that's making the air really dirty or the water really dirty. All sorts of things like that harm the environment. But if humans have hurt the environment a lot, do you think we can help restore it or make it better? Probably. We could do simple things like planting trees or recycling or cleaning up any trash you see lying around outside. Stuff like that that can help make our world a better place and our environment a little bit better. Now, our environment hasn't just changed on small scales like throwing litter everywhere. There's been a lot of changes in our in our human environment over the years based on how we've developed cities and other things. We're gonna look at that in a minute. But the cool thing about cities is that they were all designed by engineers, no matter at what point in time, whether it was thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, or just recently when a city was you know, constructed and built and designed. All of these things were designed by engineers and engineers follow something called the engineering design process. So all engineers and all of you at home work a little bit differently. So some people ask questions, they think, and maybe in terms of it, cities, they'll see a, block, a plot of land and think, what would happen if I put a park right there? And then they think through every possible solution before they move forward. Some people are planners where they just want to sit and have a detailed idea of what they're going to do and what they're going to build and where they're going to put it before they do anything. And that is okay. Some people are creators. They just want to build and jump right in and put things together and see what happens. And that's all okay. But the one thing that all engineers have in common is they all circle back to a phase called improving. And sometimes things don't work right the first time, and that is a-okay. If you've been following these videos, you know that I fail on these builds all the time. I send rubber bands flying across the room. I break balloons, all that type of thing. Failing is okay because that helps you learn what does and does not work and you can think about how we can improve and make the best design possible. Now, when we look at our book, make sure you pay close attention to the engineering in this book. Now, there was lots of planning in some of these, in some of these streets that we're about to see. There was lots of building and there were lots of things that these designers and engineers thought would be improvements over the existing structures. So we're gonna take a look at this book a Street Through Time it was illustrated by Steve Noon. And we're gonna see a lot, well, what looks like a lot of different streets. But the cool thing is every single drawing in this book is a drawing of the same street, just at different points in time. It is the same little plot of land that was developed over time. Now see if you can spot how you can tell if it's the same street. See if you can spot what's in common through all of these pictures. And then pay close attention to changes in the environment throughout time. So we're going to take a look at a street through time and see what we can notice. 
So Street Through Time, illustrated by Steve New. So we're going to start in the Stone Age. So this picture is a drawing of what the street looked like about 10,000 BCE, which is a really, 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 really long time ago. So let's see, once upon a time, everyone lived by hunting, fishing, and gathering food. People were nomads, moving across the land in small groups, seeking food and shelter. This tribe has just found a place to spend the winter. So this camp is the start of our street. So take a close look at this drawing. What do you observe about what is on the street? So I see lots and lots of trees all the way back here. Lots and lots of trees. There's some water here. Not super clean. Pretty brown. But it's probably just dirt. No real pollution yet because there's not really anything to pollute it. It's just water. So I'm this, this street is characterized a lot by trees and a lot by the water. But so there's, there's these tents that people are living in. No real buildings yet. So in order to get food, people are hunting. They're gathering berries off of trees. There's, let's see, the tents are here. They're kind of tall. They can probably fit a few people. They're not really super huge. There's someone making a canoe out of a log. There's tools that are made up of stone. And so the next tribe away is probably about 50 miles away. So there's all this forest that stretches across the land and there's not too many people. So you can see there's some people there, not a whole lot. Lots of nature, which is, you know, pretty good deal. I like trees. I think they're pretty. So let's see what changes. So this is 10,000 BC, but then the first farmers were in 2000 about BC. So more than 8,000 years have passed. People have learned how to grow crops and keep animals. They've also developed new skills such as pottery making, weaving cloth and metalworking. The site by the river now has a permanent settlement with huts. So do you observe anything different from our first picture? So there's still lots and lots and lots and lots of trees. We have our water, which is a little bit greener. We have some huts. Now these are different than our tents. So these are a little bit stronger. They have, they're made of wood. They have these cool roofs. These are called thatch roofs. They're made, these huts are made of wood. And then the roofs are, have like a thatch texture. So it's actually a building, not just a tent. So that might offer a little bit more protection. They also have these wooden fences here behind the huts. They're called palisades. And what those do is it helps protect the people from any wild animals that might be in the forest. That might not be so nice. So there's people using river clay to make pots. There's people who they have these now boats to go fishing instead of just logs. The people have now cattle that they're keeping. They have cattle and pigs and sheep. And there's a whole bunch of villages that have all joined together. So even though, so with the last, the last part of the street, the next village was 50 miles away. But there's stuff built back here. So there's a stone circle back here that several villages have worked together to construct. Yeah, so there's that palisade. There's fields now that have wheat and barley. So there's still lots and lots of trees. The water's still there. But there's a field that people are growing crops. They're not just gathering berries from trees. They're actually growing their own crops. And there's these new structures. So let's see what happens from here. There's the Iron Age next, which is 600 BCE, where hundreds of years have passed. So people are now smelting iron and using iron to make new tools. And the village now is starting to prosper more. So we still have the river. We're going to see the river the whole street. So take a look at how we treat the river 
now nice open space there's still lots of trees in the backdrop we got a field we have crops going in the field we have different types of boats that are in the lake now and we can see there's a different type of hut so these are still the thatched wooden huts that we saw in the previous one but these look a little bit bigger the shape is slightly different so even though they're the same type of building the actual structure has changed a little bit so there's a more efficient plow you can kind of see the plow back there where'd you go so we have a plow that's working in the fields now so similar structure to the last one but there have been improvements to these designs that make the people's way of life a little bit easier still keeping the same essence of the city though but then things changed a little bit in roman times in about 100 ce so a little less than 2000 years ago so the roman empire spread across much of europe bringing a new way of life so the village became a town with hundreds of people and the town has large stone buildings and a bridge was built across the river for the first time so you can see the bridge right here right there so there's still the river but you can see it there's a big difference from the last street right same street but this has way more buildings than the other one did the buildings look completely different pretty much everything in this picture looks completely different so the trees the trees are still there and the river's still there but they're that the romans built off of the river so like and now instead of those tiny little boats there's this giant boat that looks like a swan and instead of our thatched wooden huts we have all of these buildings that are super tall and super detailed there's an amphitheater there's have these buildings have rooms that serve different purposes so there's really rich families that live in these big houses there's still a few huts you can see kind of back here there's these thatched huts that are just kind of chilling out back there but most of the city has been taken over by these huge buildings but sometimes things change a little bit so over the years things changed the romans moved out and different groups of people moved in and took down the roman buildings because they wanted to have their own way of life so this is about 500 years later you can see very big difference between this one and this one right so this group of people decided that they didn't want to live in a city like this so they wanted to have their own designs of their buildings so they said we still got the river but the bridge is gone we still got all these trees in the background this looks like it's in fall because the trees are more yellowy orange so this is a group who is settled in. So these, you can see how some of the traits that were before the Romans came back. So instead of a palisade, remember that wooden fence? There's just, there's another wooden fence. It's made of sticks. There's these smaller boats. There's fishing. There's all sorts of simple huts. Now, these are, again, thatched wooden huts. They're wood with the thatched roofs. So this is now the third different type of the same type of building that we've seen. So as the years progress and different engineers are building these huts, they change their design a little bit to better suit their needs. And that's what engineers do. They can see, I like this structure, but how can I make it better to work out better for what I need? So these people decided that this shape of house was better for them. So they designed a new version of those thatched wooden huts. Now, eventually, we get to the medieval era. So this is the 1200s. So this is hundreds and hundreds, this is hundreds of years later. So this would be about 800 years ago. 
So the king of the land has given the land to someone called a lord. Now the lord built a castle up here to protect the people from anyone who wanted to hurt their city. So the lord used these people called knights to chase away trouble. But in return, the people worked for the lord. So we have lots of different types of houses. So like I said, we have the castle. The castle is made of stone. We still have our trees. The river's still there. We've got our fields. But see, so the people who the Lord who ran the castle was in charge of would work and plow the fields for this guy who lives in the castle. So there's, you can see there's some more fields. We have one set of land where they're growing wheat over here. It's called fallow land. That's where seeds have not been planted. So we have different types of boats. And you can see these houses are starting to look less like huts and more like houses that we might see today. So we have these, this is a knight's house. It's made of stone. This one is made of wood. So we have lots of different types of houses in one street. Now what's really cool is your windows at home are probably made of glass, right? So this right here is a church. At this point in time, this church had glass windows, but only churches and rich people had glass in their windows. So something that we have now all over the place was really only for a few people way back in the 1200s. And another cool thing that they had in the medieval times, you can see this windmill right here. So this windmill, and then the, that's the guy who, this is the house of the miller who works near the windmill. That's a really cool innovation that engineers developed hundreds of years ago. So that's what it looked like in the 1200s. But then only 200 years later, was the 1400s. So this is a medieval version of this of our city. So thanks to the trade brought up by boats up the river, the village has grown into a town. Its citizens have purchased a charter, which allows them to run the town themselves. Some of the merchants have become very rich and can afford to improve their houses and shops. So if you look at our different houses, you can see they're a whole lot bigger now, right? Whole lot bigger than they were before. The trees are still there, but there's not as many. This is winter based on the amount of snow. And so there was lots of development of these houses. So let's fast forward a little bit to the 1700s. So we just looked at the street in the 1400s. So this is now the 1700s, so 300 years later. And this is about, 300 years ago. And it looks a little something like this. Do you see any differences? So the town is prospering. Some houses have been rebuilt in the latest style, which you can see these houses look a little bit different than some of the houses that we've been looking at so far. So the wealthy citizens have a lot of spare time and they pride themselves on their polite manners their learning and their elegant parties. So the people in this part in the town in this era really like fancy things. So you can see that the bridge is back and the bridge is really cool because you can see all those details on the railing. It's not just a basic bridge. There's, it's very, very pretty, just like a lot of the stuff in the 1700s. So before all of our houses were just wooden and they had wood paneling on the inside, but this is when engineering people that the engineers decided that they wanted their houses to be a little bit more colorful so they started using different colors on the inside of their houses whether it's with plaster or wallpaper and the person in charge of the town doesn't live in the castle anymore they live in this mansion right there that's a different type of building still big and fancy but let's see, you can see there's different boats on the river. There's all sorts of, there's a town hall.
There's wooden statues. You can see how tall these buildings are. They're made of brick instead of stone or wood. Brick houses now. And a lot of them are real, real big. So again, there's still trees, but they're way, way far away in the distance. And the water's still there. It's nice and pretty. But then, that, this is when things start to change a little bit again. So if we move into the 1800s, this is now about 200 years ago. See if you notice a difference in this picture. So remember how bright this picture is. Okay, so this is the 1700s. Look at the change into the 1800s. So this happens because coal was discovered nearby and new industries with machines powered by steam moved into the town and factories were built to house them. People from the country were, have come to work in these factories. So our bridge is still there. A lot of our buildings are still there, but it's looking a little bit darker. So you have a bigger boat now down here. This is a big boat. But I'm seeing a big difference between this picture and the last one. Are you seeing the difference? Think about our environment. What are you noticing that's in this one that wasn't in any of the others? There's all these chimneys from the factories that are, shoot, that are shooting that black smoke into the air. And that's where things like air pollution come from. So, and these are really old chimneys, so there's no real like, today a lot of factories use special filters to keep a lot of this out of the air, but they weren't using those yet. So lots of black smoke, lots of dark. Not, not the best for the environment. You can see there's less trees. But then later in that century, thanks to the industry, the town, so it started as our land, which grew into a village, which grew into a town, has now become a city. Many people are better off. Working and living conditions have improved. There's a new train line that carries people and goods to other towns and other cities. So we've gone from the nearest village being 50 miles away to different groups of people working together to form one stone structure to now there's a train that can connect people even faster than ever before. So the, a lot of the buildings are the same, but you can see there's a railroad station in here. There's that train right there. It's still lots of factories. There's these things called suburbs growing in the back, back here, not in the city itself. So the suburbs are smaller towns that are usually centered off of a big city. So a lot of this is still the same, but there have been lots of changes to keep up with new technology. Now that was the late 1800s. So let's take a look and see what the street looks like today. So that, remember our modern, so this is what our street looks like in modern day. So in recent years, there have been, there's been a lot of change in the city. Modern businesses have replaced most heavy industries. People have become more environmentally aware and leisure time has increased for many people. So do you notice any differences in this picture than the last couple? So our buildings, the, the structure's still there. A lot of our buildings are much taller though. Our river's still there. They've swapped out the, the bridge a little bit. Now, one thing that I find really interesting is I don't see a lot of trees. Now they might be behind the buildings, but I can see trees there. And that's it. But also what's cool is remember I showed you our windmill several cities ago. Up here, we have wind turbines. So that helps to use renewable, collect the renewable energy from the wind. So and then remember when we talked about how glass windows were only for the rich or for churches, this whole city hall, like look at all that glass. 
So over the years, the city changed. Now, what do you think the city might look like in the future? So this is what Steve Noon thinks the street of the future would look like. So in 50 years, our street might look a little something like this. Improved healthcare and worker robots mean that people could live longer and have even more leisure time. The population increased, so there's not as much space and architects need to be more creative. And protecting the environment is challenging, but there are measures in place to help reduce pollution. So take a look at all these innovations that might happen. So we have up here, you have a garden that's catching water. There's an air taxi. There's like this cool like boat thing. It's a self-steering yacht. The bridge has more flowers and plants. There, and even though there's not as many trees, they're finding these engineers have found ways to work plants in. Whether it's up here on the top on these really cool buildings, there's these cool wind turbines. There's some that are just planted in the middle of the city. There's a skyscraper farm. So there's lots of cool ways that engineers can continue to develop the city. Now, we saw a lot of different versions of the same city and how engineers developed the same plot of land to keep up with the times. But there's a couple of things that are very, very important here. And that is how we need to protect our environment. So this is the very first picture that I showed you, okay? See, I see there's a big difference between this picture and this picture, which is the modern city. So all this technology and development is great, but we still need to protect our environment. So let's see if we can design our very own city that helps us stay modern while help keeping our environment nice and safe. So I'm gonna grab my materials. So I have my graph paper and I have a pencil and I have some colored pencils. So go ahead and grab your planning materials because what we're going to do is we're going to be engineers and do some and do the planning step. We're going to be making blueprints of what we think our city of the future looks like. So you can either design your own city or you can use the street that we showed you in the book. So I'm going to use the street that I showed you in the book. And what's important is we need to see if we can have our cool future city, but incorporate as much of the environment and protect it as we can. So I'm going to start with our river. So I'm just doing a design that I want. You can design this however you want. I'm going to add some color. If you don't want to add some color, you don't have to. So I'm going to add my river right there. And I want to make sure it's nice and clean. So I have my river like so. And I think to make sure that there's no pollution in there, I'm going to add a filter, a water filter right there. So that way, any dirt or garbage or anything that gets thrown into the river that shouldn't be in the river will get caught by the filter and keep our water nice and clean. Because that's one way to help protect the environment is to help reduce pollution. So I have my river with my filters in there so that way it's nice and safe. And let's see, I'm gonna add some buildings. Now I'm gonna add a really tall building that has a lot of space. Now I don't know what the space is gonna be for yet. And here's the thing, as you're planning, if you have an idea for what kind of building you wanna add, but don't know what you want the building to be for, that's okay. You can draw in whatever you want and then see if an idea comes to you. So I'm gonna add lots of windows to my building so that way whatever I use it for it can have some light. And I gotta think, how can 
can I make this more environmentally friendly? So I think I wanna use solar energy for this building. So I'm going to add on the roof of the building some solar panels. So let's see, I'm gonna add some panels. And what solar panels do is they collect energy from the sun. So that way I can use solar power, which is a renewable energy source, which means I can use it over and over and over again instead of an energy source that isn't as good for the environment. So I have my building now, it's got windows and it's got solar panels. So the power in my building comes from the sun and not from other things that aren't as good. So what kinds of cool buildings are you adding to your plan? So you can add as many, you can add whatever you want to your city. I'm going to add some flower boxes to the windows because flowers are pretty. And that's the other cool thing about planning when you're engineering is you can also design it to look like whatever you want. So I like flowers. So I'm gonna put flowers on these flower boxes. Not everything you plan has to have an extremely practical purpose. They could just be flowers because you like them. Like what I'm doing right now. I do not have a favorite flower. Well, I do, it just changes all the time. Because every time I see a flower, I'm like, oh, it's pretty. It's my favorite flower. So I'm going to do some pink flowers on the top floor. And also flowers um, are plants, and plants are just good. I want to make sure that the other cool thing about flowers is they attract fun little friends, like butterflies. And butterflies are pretty. I think I'm going to put a butterfly on my building. Because why not? This will be the butterfly building. Why not? So I have my building now. It has solar panels. It has flowers. It has a butterfly. And we talked about planting, right? So one really cool way that we can help our environment is to plant seeds. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a green space right along the river. And our green space can have buildings near it, but I'm gonna have some grass. I'm gonna add a tree. Add a nice tree with a, with a red trunk, apparently. Because planting trees can help our environment. So I have my green space with my tree. Let me fill in the tree so it looks like a tree. And the green space not only can help our environment, but it could be a good place for the citizens of my city to just come and relax and spend time with their friends and play outside. I'm gonna add some benches in there. So I have my green space like that. We have now my green space. Now the now I'm gonna add some more buildings in a minute, but this whole creating a green space has me thinking, can we make our own plans in real life? What do you think? Is it possible to, make, to just grow our own plants? Maybe, well, uh, which I think we can try that right now. So you, we have some other materials. We have some soil and we have some seeds. Now these are bean seeds, but this will work with a lot of different types of seeds. So planting something is actually really, really easy. All we're gonna do is we're gonna open our bag of soil, like so. I like this because you get to get a little dirty. You make a tiny little, stick your finger in there, make a tiny little, little, not so much a hole, you don't need to go all the way down, but just, a nice little pocket. And then I'm just gonna drop my seeds in there in a the little pocket. 
And then I'm going to take my dirt and cover those seeds just like that. So I have just planted my seeds. Now, if you're at home, what I would recommend doing is spraying your seeds with some water. Don't get them too soaked. So that way it becomes like a complete like thick mud. Just get it wet enough that the soil is nice and damp. And then you can seal your bag and hang it up in a sunny window. So that way your plant will get its nice sunlight and it has its nutrients. Now, after a little bit, your plant will start sprouting. Now, if you get a grown up to help you, what you can do is when your plant sprouts, you can take your soil from your bag and plant it in the ground. And same thing, all you gotta do is get your soil, get like a little pocket, put your plant in there, cover it back, and then just leave it outside. And then your plant will grow and you will have created your very own plant, which is good because making, because growing plants is good for the environment. So I'm just going to let that chill over there and go back to my city. So now we have a plant and we have the start of our blueprint. Now, what's really cool is you can see, I, I'm not sure what type of seeds you want to plant. You can plant as many seeds as you want, because that's the cool thing is if you plant your seed and it grows and you decide, hey, this is pretty cool you can probably get other types of seeds and see what types of plants you can grow. Now, this is a great project for grownups to help you out with. And then you can see what kinds of things you can grow together. So I'm going to add, so like I said, mine's beans. So I'm going to add in my background. So I'm going to add, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a community garden in here so that way we can grow beans. Now, I kind of liked the idea of this garden skyscraper thing that I saw on the street of the future. So I'm gonna put another building in there. That is my community garden skyscraper. So remember, we need to think about what our plants need to grow. They need their water, they need air, and they need some light. So, I'm gonna have these open sections where we have our garden growing. So I'm gonna do these nice places in here in these middle parts to plant the plants. And then the closed sections will be where the people can come and talk about the environment. That's what they're gonna do. So I have my, these plants right there, right there, got some leaves, leaves, leaves. So I have the beginnings of my community garden right there, my community garden building. So I have my open section right here and an open section right here, and then this is closed. And I'm gonna add in some windows because windows make everything better because that way you can see the cool green space that I made. Now, one thing that I forgot to add into this that I need to add now is my bridge, because I think it's really, really cool how our street has a bridge that even though they have a river, they can still cross the bridge and go visit other cities. So maybe the people in my city can cross my bridge and go visit some of the cities that you're designing at home. So I'm gonna add my bridge. So I have this bridge right there and this part of the bridge right there. I have my bridge. So that way my people, the people that live in my city can go visit others and they can walk there there's nothing wrong with driving, but sometimes all you really want is a nice walk in the sunshine where you can see all of these cool plants that we all just planted. So 
So I have my bridge right there. So we can leave my city and go across the river and go visit people. I'm gonna add some more of those wind turbines that we talked about to help collect some of that renewable wind energy. Right up there on the top, I'm gonna to put it on the top of my community garden building because that's where I think I can connect, collect rather the most wind is nice and high up. Let's see, how many should I do? I'm gonna go with three. Let's see, keep, I'm gonna keep designing my city. All right. So here's my current blueprint of my plan for my future city. So I have the same elements that our city and our city street had throughout time. I have my river and I have different buildings that I designed to help suit my goal, which was to have some cool buildings that helped our environment. So I have my solar panels, I have my green space and my plants, I have my water filters that help take out pollution. I've got my wind turbines and I have my cool skyscraper garden thing. So I'm gonna keep designing my city and I really want all of you to keep designing your cities as well. I think that you all can come up with some amazing ideas for some really cool cities and some really cool ways that we can help restore our environment. And make sure you keep checking on these plants to see what you can grow. And then who knows? You can see if you can find the perfect place to put your plant in on the street where you live, whether it's outside your house, maybe you know someone who has a community garden and you, if you're growing beans or other vegetables, you can be like, hey, look what I planted. Do you want to add it? So think about how you can improve on your future city and help the environment and grow your plant. So you all did an amazing job today, everybody. So keep working on these plans, keep designing, keep growing plans, and make sure you tune in next week right here for another Maker Monday activity. So thank you all for hanging out with me today. Keep brainstorming. And until next time, stay curious.